Okay. Talk about the incomplete grade. How's it going? Good. I actually bought a U-scope. Oh, awesome. You know, yeah, I, I got a I got a bunch of stuff I'm going to share tonight that is outside of Pico. So it actually is just U-scope stuff. Um, oh, the scope nice. Is, the scope is good. It It's just, um, uh, you know, it doesn't have the pre... It actually, it has pre-built tests inside of it, but it's not like Pico. However, it's way less than Pico. So if you are, you know, if you're not looking for cam crank sync um, or any combination test, U-Scope is awesome. Yeah. And, and it's fast enough to do CAN bus too, which is, uh, I think it's important. To see I just it. like the portability thing. Like yeah, I don't yeah. have to buy a laptop to, to work with it and everything right. like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it comes with its own battery. What I would, I would uh, watch is just charging that thing. Um, because if you leave it sitting for too long, the U scope will die. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's Hudson. Hello? Hello. How are you guys doing? I'm here. Oh. How are you doing? Oh, it's good. Okay, good. While we're waiting for everybody, how's work going, Hudson? <laughs> Hudson? I'm going to mute mine because I'm eating some food. Oh, okay, no problem. Again. Never mind. Yep. How, how's things going? It's a going. It's a going. I've been able to get into the uh, unemployment for two weeks now, but. Eh. That's what yeah. I Yeah. they are overloaded. Hey, Darren. Hey. Hey, Evan. Can you hear me, Lawrence? I can hear you. Evan? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Me? <clears throat> hey, have you? Have you? Not that it's res your responsibility or anything. I'm not telling you anything with that. But have you talked to uh, uh, Shane at all? Me? Yeah. Um. Not. Not really. Okay. I'm just curious because he hasn't. He hasn't responded. Uh. I can. I can talk to him if you want. No. Nah, no. Nah, it's okay. He's a big boy. He can. He should be responsible. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's four o three. Um, I give you, I give you, give everybody else a couple more minutes. Hey, um, on a on a side note, I I think I've already told you guys, but just to let you guys know again, I pretty much flagged everybody um, as needing help. Uh, it wasn't personal. It, it for most of you, it was um, really to make sure that if you guys needed some kind of help through the school. Or something that the TLC could pr provide for you guys that um, that you could talk to them. I think there's been some some calls going out. Oh, there's Nate. Okay, good. There's been some calls going out um, asking you guys or all of my students because we changed to this online platform. If there's anything that that you guys needed um, that the TLC could help you with. Oh, that's what that was. It wasn't, it's not personal. It's just, I want to make sure you guys, if you don't want to talk to me about it, if somebody else, you know, like a counselor could help you with something, you know, even like internet, like I, I, some of the students have really shady, you know, shaky internet and um, they're not, they're not even able to do Zoom. So the school opened up their, their back parking lot to students to allow them to, to log in and do their stuff um, in the car. Um, that's just an option. I sent a couple. I sent an email out telling you guys that 
Um, yeah. And I think it's 405 now. So I'll just start. So there's, uh, I sent an email out yesterday as well, um, talking about uh, having an incomplete. So as of right now, uh, the school doesn't know when we're going to get back to, uh, to be able to do shop work. So, however, like I said in the email, you guys in ignitions class, you're good. Like we, we only had, I think, seven task sheets. It was so minor. Um, and that's why I've been trying to combine the class, the courses, fuels and ignitions together. Um, and it was this way with the other book too, Halderman. It was very, it, it's supposed to be combined into two, to one class as engine performance. Um, but that's the way the university wants to keep it is with two classes. So, um, I, I'm not concerned that you guys won't won't be able to won't be completing your shop work because I believe you did already. Um, and everything we've done after that is to reinforce the ideas that we learned um, early on in the semester. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, if if there's something that you feel like you're missing on the ignition side of this, because I feel like it's so hard to teach this class in, in a whole semester because it it's not really there isn't that much that we could do in on the ignition side um, but on fuels like you guys who took fuels with me you guys know there's plenty of more work and diagnosis um, on the, in those components than there is on the ignition side so um, if there's something you feel like you're missing or you want to cover it a little bit more um, you can tell me during your review or you can email me or, or text me, whatever you got to do. Um, just let me know and I'll find ways to cover it, how we can through this. So I, I if you've been logging in, you've been doing, um, following along with the work we've been doing on, online here, there's no reason you guys can't get an A. Um, as long as you complete your task sheets on CDX and then you complete uh, most of the assignments I, I gave you after that, um, for ignitions, there's no reason why you guys can't can't pass this class um the the dean emailed me and said that there's a couple courses that are flagged as as being not being able to complete because of the shop work however ignitions was not one of them because i told her already that we have completed all of our task sheets which is what we're, we're required to do so that we stay um, certified as a an instructional you know, school. So, you guys understand what I'm saying with that? Like, you, I mean, you guys, do you guys feel like you're missing anything on the ignition side? So, as long as we complete our work for ignitions, we're good. As long as you complete the task sheets that that um, I assigned you guys in the beginning, I showed you guys. There's only, there's only so many task sheets. Like, for example, one of them was pulling spark plugs, right? I mean. Yeah. I don't know how many times you guys pulled spark plugs throughout all the time I've known you. Some of you have done engines with me, you've done ignitions, and you've done fuels. So I could guarantee that you are able to pull a spark plug. Um, some of them were diagnosing like a misfire, right? So, like you had a, Darren, you had a question about that. So I said, yeah, you put it in the task sheet. Especially if you were in diag and you ran across something like that, I'll let that go because I was there a lot of the times when you were diagnosing stuff like that. But um, I, I so I don't see why you guys, especially those of you who've been logging in consistently, I don't see why you guys can't get an A for the course, um, being that there was only a small amount of task sheets for my engines class. Just this morning's chapter, chapter twenty, I think there was something like nineteen task sheets. So that's a whole chapter of task sheets they have to complete. Um, in order to complete that course. Uh, but I'm not worried about you in ignitions class passing the course, as long as you do the CDX work um, and then a lot of the AVI work. And of course, the electude simulators, if you can do those, that's definitely proving that you are, and you pass them, you know, within reason that that's worthy of a, of a passing grade. So um, I want to, I have to send that, the dean asked us to send that letter out to ensure the students that they understood that if they, or to reinforce the students that um, some of the courses, uh, because they require shop work, for example, welding, um, obviously that whole course is, is all in the shop. And if you can't complete that, the teacher's supposed to be able to give you an incomplete grade um, 
where uh, at some point when the school reopens, they will let you know, you know, what days you can come and make up that work. Um, yeah, however, I seen Mr. Mark yesterday morning. Oh yeah, Mark. Morning, what did he say? Um, I asked him, and then he was like incomplete, and then he was with his coworker or his friend. He's like, "Nah, no worry. He'll pass you guys." And then they just started laughing. So. No, yeah, yeah. See, that's that's the thing. I'm getting really inconsistent um, answers from everybody. So I'm telling you what's going on. Uh, basically, the the class is like welding. You're going to get an incomplete, uh, and it's going to be up to the instructor um, or the dean to tell you when they're going to allow us back into school. If they push us, if you if they if they tell us we have to give you an incomplete, for example, if we can't go back in during the summer. Um, which probably won't work for some of the instructors, but um, for engines class, I told them as soon as they allow us to go back, they can go and finish up their, their engines, they have to reassemble their engines and then put it back in the cars. If they tell us we can't go back in summer, then they're gonna push this incomplete into fall. And so you will be responsible for scheduling with the instructor or court. the instructor will reach out to you and tell you like, look, we have these days and times available for finishing your incomplete. Um, but for ignitions, I am not concerned with, you know, the list of people here that you guys can't complete the course, especially with A. Um, but if, if you decide to just drop out the rest of the, the Zoom stuff, then I can't give you a grade. That's, that's what I've been trying to tell you guys from the beginning is this, I need you to participate. And I've been, I, I have it recording here. So, um, you know, if you need to go back in the lecture or whatever we covered, I can send you the, the Zoom. Uh, recordings. So, um, that being said, if you haven't heard from your other instructors by Thursday, please let me know. I'll send another message to the dean. Um, so I've, I've been trying to get some kind of communication going on here to let you guys know what's going, you know what's happening. If you guys are getting an incomplete for your class, if you have if you are expecting um, uh, to return or whatever. Um, also, uh, the, the, the schools must have sent you an email, uh, I think it was yesterday morning, where they said students are being allowed to choose credit or no credit as a, a grade. So you as a student have to decide if you want to get credit or no credit or a, or a letter grade. Um, like for example, some of you know you were passing Let's, say, let's just say Diag 60, right? You were getting, um, I don't know if you're getting a letter grade or not. And it, there's, I don't know what, you, some of you had questions about this last time. I think there's a, there's a, uh, one other student missing here. But um, if you, if, I mean, have you heard about it? Have you gotten an email? I think uh, I've seen it. You think so? Is it, or, um, yeah, hey. there's an email. None of you are in breaks class, are you? Okay. Um, well, by Thursday, no. if, you have, if you haven't heard anything from the other automotive instructors, let me know and I'll try to follow up, okay? Um, just a random clarification question. So sure. if we do go for like the incomplete and then we have to come back uh, later semester over the summer to finish up the time? Yes. Do we need to re-register for no. that next semester when we come no. in? We just kind of work out a time and come in. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, however, if you chose to get a, um, if you chose credit or no credit as an option, you would not have to come and finish it because it would no longer be a incomplete. Um, but if you are on financial aid, the credit or no credit option could affect your GPA. So just think about that. I, I'm just um, I'm just repeating what the school has sent out as a notice about credit or no credit because they're they're allowing that extension way far beyond um, what is normally allowed for credit or no credit. So uh, they're just they're they're doing that because they understand that some students might be worried that they you know they're they're going to continue on with life in fall 
and if they can't return to school because they were supposed to graduate, the the credit option is better than having an incomplete and having to try to straggle on one other, you know, you know, drag out one more class that um, they may or may not have time for in fall. So just think about that as an option if that if you're concerned about that or for your other classes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And any other questions? Nope. Okay, so um, I have a, a simulator open. I have a, a video from from Scanner Danner, and I also have a bunch of stuff I've been I've been saving throughout the week um, to show you on for for ignition work on on actually it's it's been mostly on a U scope. So uh, those of you who are are curious about doing scope work, but you don't want to spend all the money on it a pico scope which is it, it is very expensive and if you're not doing a lot of diag work it almost is is not worth the money however um the u scope is much much more affordable and you can get a lot of work done with that um even on can bus side it's quick enough to pick up the can bus uh network anyway let's see why don't we do a review real quick uh i'll start on the opposite side of the screen with nate Nate, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, what do you want to talk about today? Not sure. Not sure. Okay, I'll skip you. I'll come back. Yeah, I'll, I think. I'll think of something. These reviews are, are not just about the material we've covered, but anything that you might be thinking about where um, you're not sure about, you know, anything we've covered on the ignition side. And I I say ignitions, but I also cover things like CAN bus in this class because I think at some point you guys should have should have learned this in electrical. However, um, it doesn't get taught in electrical so much and um, there's no other chances for me to teach you this material. So if, if you, you, know, you have questions about CAN bus or um, even inputs or outputs, Stuff like that, because those are those are the the main things we cover. Besides how an ignition coil works, or how the spark plug works, or um, you know, waste spark, or anything like that, we can we can cover it during during the review. All right, I'll come back to you, Nate. Uh, how about how about you, Evan? Um, I was doing a what's it called electude quiz, mm -hmm. and I got really stuck at one point I didn't finish it um it's on the I'm pulling it up you know what I, I uh I've been trying to practice with the other students is that they can share their screen with the class so if you're on a computer and and you can if you got the electric problem up you can actually share it um with the, the zoom class okay um how do I do that um, at the bottom of the screen, there's going to be a green arrow, bo a box uh, around a green arrow. There you go. There you go. Perfect. That work? Yep. Okay. This is waste spark. Oh, secondary. Okay. So uh, no, it's a uh, the distributed ignition system. <clears throat> it looks like waste spark. Oh no, maybe not. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I got stuck in this one too. Yeah. So it says secondary coiled. Generates 10,000 measurement shows that 22,000 volts are across the spark plug of cylinder two. How many volts are across the spark plug of cylinder three? I didn't exactly know how to get that answer. I tried a few different things, but I couldn't figure it out. I think it's 8,000. 8,000? I think they're supposed to add up to 10,000. I think. I think I past this one well how would you get that um this is a waste part 10,000 minus 2,000 I think that's what it says in the reading it says like they're supposed to total together I think so which one is Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So, 
the measurement of all the spark plugs has to add up to what the secondary coil generates. Yeah, because yeah, it's in series. Okay. So it's 8,000? Is that what you said for cylinder? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Huh. This is a waste. Anybody? This is a waste spark system. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, these things trip me up sometimes. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me write this down. This is the guy in his. Oh, okay, I, I get it, I get it. Because two and three fire at the same time, and cylinder two is the waste spark. It doesn't... It doesn't fire... The voltage flows through back into the coil. Um, I think Scanner Danner actually showed a video or a drawing of this last week during the, during the, during the video. Well, you weren't here, were you, Evan? Uh, last week? Yeah. No, not not okay. the very last class. There is a a video, and I think he, the way he explains it is the is the best. The way the current flows out of uh, the secondary part of the coil, it flows through the spark plug, it jumps to the next spark plug, and continues back to the um, the coil. So it completes that circuit that way. Okay. So it, they're not firing together, but they're sequential. Mm -hmm. Just to complete the circuit, um, I wrote this down. I will, I will try to. I will follow up with this on Thursday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is good. We're gonna yeah. probably do the electrode problem like this. I will assign one of you randomly the electrode problem. We're gonna pull it up, and then we're you're gonna project it on your screen um, tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, Darren. Darren. Okay. Um... Oh. I found something on CDX that I, I thought was pretty interesting when reading the, the chapter. Let me pull it up. I'm gonna try to use that share screen too. Okay, cool. It helps because then I get a visual exactly what you're. Yeah. Yeah. Darren. Oh, there it is. Did it work? I can see it. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just thought this technician tip was like pretty interesting yeah, while reading know, this chapter. Um, you know, Tyler was working on that, that Toyota truck, the 3.0. And he was having issues where it would not fire the coils or give injector pulse to the injectors. And this is actually what I told him to do. I told him to take a heat gun, um, heat up the computer, maybe see if there's a solder that's separating or a, a transistor inside the computer that when heated up was, was creating an open circuit. Because it would run and then shut it off when it was hot and then it would restart. Um, and he said, well, how am I going to cool it down? I said, we'll get some ice packs from the... Um, you want to be careful with this ice cube trick because obviously you don't want water on the ignition coil, right? Uh, we found this out the hard way the, that one night with Yen when he sprang the ignition coil on the Ford Ranger. Remember that, Yen? Ford. <laughs> yeah, too much, too much soapy water is no good. So um, obviously you don't want water in it and a high voltage is not really not really safe however i mean the worst thing you're going to get is a zap but um you want to be careful where you put ice cubes 
So using ice pack, like something that is in a, a, con, a t contained like, you know, one of those gel packs, that's the best way. If you look it up, Matco, that, that is a good tech tip, Darren. Um, Matco used to make this really cool tool. It, you use shop air and basically one side of the tool had a, a, a restriction device, kind of like a, um, kind of like an expansion valve deal where it forced the air through um, this very small orifice, like an orifice tube. And when, it's, when it spread out the other side, it expanded, so it became cold. Um, and then you flipped it the other way, and it re, um, it went from expanded to constricted, and it, it created hot air. Um, I don't know why they stopped selling that tool, but um, that was another good way of, of uh, finding electrical problems that are having issues with hot and cold especially if you don't have a scope where you can watch the component um, you know running and then when you heat it up or something you can, you can see it failing um, anyway thank you Darren okay who's next I'll go back to Nate Nate you want a chance at this or you want to come back to you I guess I can bring up um, can bus because I'm not really too good with um, the understanding of like, I mean, I know what it is. I'm not too good with that CAN bus thing. Okay. The, I usually... Like I the usually, measurements. Okay. I usually try to, um, I usually try to just cover the major parts that you guys need to know, which is, and, and um, you know what, for next class, I will pull up the voltages again. It's like 1.2 and on the negative side and 2.1 or something like that on the positive side. I gotta go and look it up. I, I you know, I, um, I don't memorize that stuff because it's num. Those are numbers you could look up. Plus, I was always afraid that the CAN bus would, depending on the car you're working on, that could change. But, um, I, I will look up more information for for on Thursday so we can talk about CAN bus. Because actually, we're running out of ignition related material on the um, even with scanner danner. I mean, we could we can go over the inputs thoroughly, but I believe we went over all the inputs like uh, cam crank, uh, you know, hall effect and uh, variable reluctance and optical sensors. We went over all that stuff in on CDX. Um, so I can start to cover more on, on CAN bus. However, the major numbers you guys need to know, how much resistance, actually I'll ask you, Nate, how much resistance should the total CAN bus circuit have? Um, 120 uh, or 60. 60, that's total because we're taking the terminating Both resistors, which is CAN high and CAN low should have two 120 ohm resistors. And together, those added up equal 60 ohms. So you should have 60 ohms across the CAN high and CAN low. If you have, um, if you're testing across CAN high and CAN low and you get 120 ohms, you say we test across CAN high and CAN low and we get 120 ohms, what does that mean? Uh, one side's open. One side's open. Good. Okay. If we see um, if we see zero ohms, or we see OL, actually, yeah. What if we see zero ohms? What does that mean? Short. What does it mean if we have one? One one ohm. One one ohm. Yeah, we'll just use that number. What if it? What if we have one ohm? There's a fault with both. There's a fault with both. Okay, good. Okay. Um, and then I guess depending on what you're trying to diagnose. So say you had 120 ohms, and then you start. How would you? How would you guys diagnose um, where the fault was? 
could disconnect stuff. Sure. Okay, you mm -hmm. could. That's that is a trick. Um, I think I talked about that early on. If you were in a network, you could find the fault in the network by unplugging one component at a time and, and waiting to see if the network comes back up. Um, but what if you were? Uh, okay, yeah, I guess that would be the best way. But um, you could back probe. Okay, so say we're trying to figure out which side the fault was in, can high or can low. Um, how would you diagnose it if you measured across both can high and can low and you you measured 120 ohms? We've done some of these in elect two. How, how could you diagnose that? Guys. If what's what's the you know um what, what, hold on let me share a screen hold on give me a second I'm going to um. Gonna pull up. Uh, you get? Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the this is not a, the paid version of Electude. This is the free game version of Electude. Um, this is what I was using for a while to teach from before before I got the grant. So if you go to experiment mode right here, game mode on the left. It's got three levels here. Um, then there's experiment mode. Experiment mode is supposed to just set you on a car that you can play with and test out the tools. So let's let's go to. Um, Experiment one and start this. On, only reason I'm I'm going to use this as an example so we can follow with can high and can low and, and um, the resistances. Okay, so I'm going to pick the easiest can place to get to, which is right here. So I pull up my multimeter. Are you, are you there, Nate? Yeah. Okay, so if I pull up my multimeter and I cross these two. What are we expecting to see? 60. 60. Yeah. Wait, I must have them on backwards. There we go. So close to 60. Close enough. Um, we'll say if we did measure right here and it was at, um, I got to look this up. White and green is can high. So white and green is our positives. High is positive. Um, so if you have your if you have your leads backwards, it will obviously read something completely different, right? So if our leads yeah, are backwards, I think, huh? I think that's why in my simulator I I got stuck because I didn't know I had it on backwards. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Okay. I was on like that too. I'll try to clarify that more for the future classes but if we if we uh you got to make sure can high is positive can low is negative so if you um uh if, if we were to measure here and it was 120 ohms across the can network what could we do next to check each separately yeah right. disconnect, disconnect each one we could disconnect each one and go to uh, Obviously, if it was on the positive side, we'd want to connect to ground and see if it um, if that side isolates the 60 ohms or not, right? So if, if I take this one and I go to my ground, we should have 120 ohms. Oh, I think that's the normal for electrode, like 110, 112. Yeah, it's... to the low side, it should be equal one to four. Okay, so. 
Let me add this together. Real quick. Eighty one seventy, and the other side was one twelve, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, you can't just add up. Um, yeah, you can't just add them up that way. There's this. There's a really complicated formula for adding two resistors together. Now let me show it to you. Uh, and that's why I try to teach it this way. Because let's say you're out in the you're out working on a car. You really want to just look for the main numbers like sixty um, for 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 combining them together. So this is, can everybody see this? Add two. I did this before, and it was it was really hard to understand. Is that the one over one over R one plus one, or kind of one over one over R two? Yes, there's a there's a calculation. And then it's the double inverted thing. Yes, double inverted. I don't know if we talked about this before, Ben. Did we do this? Um, I remember us going over it in that lecture call, at least. You know, I think there actually is a video. I, I saw it a while back. There's a video Scanner Danner does of this. And he's like, yeah, and Scanner Danner is pretty sharp. And he's like, there's a stupid calculation that um, it makes no sense. And it's really hard to remember. And that's how they come up with that, the 60 from the, one, the you know, the two, the two 120 ohm resistors breaks down into 60. Um, just happens to to work out where it's half of uh, the resistance. And I actually asked my brother-in-law. He does electrical. He, he's a he works for Wasa, an electrical company. But um, he's got an engineering degree, and he was telling me something about uh, it has something to do with how much current is flowing. The oh, I, I think I remember you talking about this. And and, and so I honestly think, like, as a, I don't find it as important to remember why it's done this way. I mean, as as the, num the, the numbers mean more than how it got there. So it's easier to for me to accept that it's 60 ohms and try to explain how we add two 120 ohm resistors that equal 60 ohms. But um, we can't add these two numbers up um, and come up with 120 or 112. It comes out to 201. It makes no sense. Maybe I don't know. Um, maybe, I, maybe I even looked up the one. I don't know. Here. Let me get rid of this calculator. This is the this is the calculation for this is how you do the R total. The R total equals R one plus R two plus R three. However, I think this is not a series. There we go. If you find total resistance in a parallel circuit with the following formula, one divided by RT equals one divided by R1 plus one divided by R2 plus one divided by R3. So, I mean, if, it, if, you're, if it's your kind of thing where you are, um, you want to know why, um, I can give you more, more answers to this on Thursday. But I wanted to cover something tonight, but I don't want to use too much of this time. So I'll cover more of CAN bus on Thursday. But um, if you were trying to diagnose it, like we were, we were here, you'd want to go. You could you could figure out where the short or open was depending on what your what side of CAN bus you're trying to diagnose by where your um, which side reacts to 
opening it to ground. Here we go. So it's all got to go back to ground. So depending on what side we're testing, can't hire, can't roll, it'll always be tested against ground. That's where we can, well, that's where we can find um, where our issue is with not getting the complete 120 or, or close enough to 120 homes. Does that make sense? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so if you reverse the leads, it will not be close to 120. Say that again. If we reverse the leads, it will not be close to 120. Well, if you reverse the leads right now, it's not even close to 60. Here, look. If I put negative on can high and I put positive on can low, we get 25 homes. But if I move my positive lead back to can high and I bring my negative lead to can low, we get our 60. So you have to make sure that the polarity is correct here. Okay. Um, on Thursday, I'll, we can we can concentrate the class on can plus. Um, okay, that was a good question, Nate. Thank you. All right, who's next? Again, you're next. Again. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. Hey, I'm here. Um, so I was watching the uh, AVI videos, uh, Anatomy of the Waveform, and kind of one thing that I just had a tangent curious thought of was uh, they said that Asian vehicles um, sometimes have such a heavy, like, potted coil, uh, so it kind of has a weak magnetic signal that the cop wands have a hard time picking up when you're trying to read for a secondary waveform. Yes. Um, I was kind of wondering, does this extra insulation, does that kind of allow for like a higher efficiency? Like it creates like a more smaller condensed magnetic field from the primary that they could use less power to operate it, reason being? Or is it just kind of trying to make less interference with other um, kind of components within the vehicle? It, it has to do with more, uh, um, less interference. Uh, because really, if you look at current, um, the coils across the board, are usually about the same amount of amps. Um, so it gets tricky when you're trying to track secondary ignition on a coil and plug where you can't. I think I've talked to you guys about this too when, we're, when we were trying to do, use the cop wand, how sometimes you have to get creative with the cop wand and maybe turn it on the side of the coil or move it around the coil until you get some kind of pattern. Um, but when you get, when you run into a, a scenario like that. What's another way that you could test with the uh, with the scope to get some kind of reading from the coil? Do you like an uh, amp clamp? An amp clamp. Yeah, you could do a um, an amp ramp for that coil, or you can actually do an amp ramp across the board if you were um, if you if you wanted to see what one cylinder was compared to another cylinder. However, you would have to identify the cylinder that you wanted to track with some kind of secondary waveform, um, whether it was on the ignition side or an injector or some kind of something that could identify that specific cylinder that you wanted to see in the parade of, of amp ramps. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Who is next? Evan went there. Darren, you went, right? Yeah, you went. Yeah. CDX. Okay, Hudson, your turn. Did you figure out what what with the, the question I had for you last week? The one regarding putting the cam sprocket back on. You know what? I, in the uh, phaser? I, I'll be honest. I started working on the... Um, I started working on some letters right after class, and I totally forgot Hudson. Um, no worries. But, uh, I'm pretty sure that if your brother's car is still running and there's no check engine light and it's run, it's running fine at higher RPMs, that it's a, a phaser-controlled 
Um, yeah. Yeah. The oil controls both ways, um, and it's not spring loaded. I um, I totally forgot Hudson. I I will, I'll make sure I do that. I I wanted to get you guys, um, from last week. I wanted to make sure that you guys had some input from um, some of the other teachers, and, and I started doing that, and I got distracted. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, I was just having troubles with the um, the CAN bus when I was doing the elective, and you covered it. Okay. Um, that's the easiest way. You know, I just try to come up with a like a shotgun approach to to teaching CAN bus, um, mostly because you know I uh, a few years ago when I started teaching CAN bus. I had seen it on the L1 test, and uh, and I realized that at our school we didn't even teach CAN bus at all. I mean, we might, you know, occasionally we might just um, take an electric. I'm not sure how deep it goes into that, but um, when I went to school, we didn't talk about CAN bus, and it was already out. So I know it gets really complicated, and by simplifying it a little bit easier into the things that you guys need to know. I feel like it, it, it helps you to at least be able to get comfortable testing can high and can low. Um, like I said, Thursday, I'll, I'll pull up the voltages again, what it, the exact voltages you should see on the, on the scope or with a voltmeter for can high and can low. Um, but that, it's, you wouldn't be able to spot intermittent problems with can bus without a scope because it's, it's, um, it's communicating too quickly. And so your voltmeter would average those numbers out, and it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to spot any problems happening in a particular module. So I'll I'll make sure that I cover more on Thursday with uh, specifically on CAN bus. Okay, and then Chris, you got anything? I mean, I have an electude problem that I can't figure out. Um, I think it's fuel related, but I don't know. Okay, do you? Know which problem it is. It is. I have it pulled up. Okay, here, sure. Let's let's just look at it. Okay. If that's okay with everybody, is yep. that okay with you guys? Yeah. Okay, good. Can you see it? I can see it. Yeah. What's the work order? Yeah, what's the work order? Check engine light on, comes on, runs irregularly. Okay. Bunch of work. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, right now it's just a system lean and O2 sensor. Okay, um, you know, uh, you gotta, with these types of codes, you gotta look if it's getting uh, not enough fuel, because with, without enough fuel down the exhaust, it's, uh, is this running right now? It is, right? Yeah, right? yeah it's running. There's no activity detected. Okay, is there a electrical... Okay, go to live data. And go to a uh, short term and long term. Uh, yeah, let's, let's display. Is it, is it warmed up already? Has it been done? Yeah, it is warm. Yep. So it's. What's the red? It's adding more fuel. What's. Well, I go, don't go. see the red. Go, go back up. It's on, I think it's on the same line. Red is our short term and yeah, green is our long term. Oh, what Maxed is the, what is 14. It? Yeah. That's the value. So oh, it must okay. be a fuel trail problem. Yeah, it's dumping fuel. So mm -hmm. it's leaning out. It's leaned out somewhere. Uh, did you check if um, how much the, did you try and actuate fuel injectors with the fuel pressure gauge? On. No, I didn't do that. You might have a well. Uh, you can turn the engine off. 
So this is the this is the trick. I, we usually cover this in fuels, but we can go over this now as a reminder for some of you guys who took fuels and an introduction for some of you who are coming to fuels. You gotta um, uh, cool your yeah your key on. And you gotta go to actuator, then you go to ECU, and you go down to each injector and you pulse it and look to make sure that the drop in your fuel pressure is the same for each uh, cylinder. Oh yeah, okay, good. So just you can um, use the you pump relay to them, yeah. reprime it too. Yes. Just turn it on and off. Yeah. Good. Good job. So one was pretty really low. I don't know if that's how they're all supposed to do it. Oh. He pulled number two. Oh, the pump was. Still oh, the on. pump relay was on. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's still, still. That's. That's oh, oh never mind, I saw it. Yeah, but number one was way more than number two. Or try to try to pulse number one again or inject number one. Yeah, look. Yeah. Like try three and four. The oh. pump really is on. I wish it would just turn off on its own. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so it looks like number one had the most drop. Mm -hmm. No, that's they have all well, this. about the same. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. What other um? Yeah, I think it's about the same. What other codes did you have? The fuel pump is because I disconnected the fuel pump and plugged it back in. Okay. Uh, the next thing I would check would be like the map. Wait, why is there a can high? Oh. Um, I probably disconnected something. Okay. Um. Do you want me to clear the codes? So... Oh no 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 because um. Okay. I want to keep the top ones. Were there any other codes? Not that I know of. Okay, then the next thing I would check would be the voltages at the O2 sensor, or check the the wiring diagram for what you should test at the O2 sensor. It's possible there's a, a, a circuit issue there. Yeah. There's a, So we click on the oh yeah, yeah. O2 sensor? Yeah. And then signal voltage of zero to one meters is at say one volt. twenty degrees Celsius. You gotta be at twenty degrees Celsius at two to four ohm. So you got some stuff to test for and then you have a scope image uh, with the hot engine idling. So why why don't you do the you could do the scope test and you could do a resistance test. Actually, that's lambda. So they're showing uh, for basically the 14.7 to 1 in a lot of the import vehicles or, or the newer vehicles. They consider it lambda. So it's always going to pop up as 1. Uh, anything okay. rich or lean will change the numbers from 1 to either you know, above 1 or below 1. So you want me to do the signal yeah, let's, voltage? Let's yeah, let's just see what you, what you get at the... Um, so, signal would be what black three or uh, yeah, number three. Just verify everything you can uh, with the information that they give you. Um, is that one supposed to be running? Is what that are right? We, what are or you no? looking for? Signal voltage? Yeah. 
Here it is. I think the signal signal voltage is zero to one though. Yeah. Um, so try snap throttling it and see if it goes to one. Check engine light is gone. Try try pulling your red leader off of uh, the signal one. Leave the engine. Oh, came back. It goes out, I believe. If you watch field trims, I wonder if it's related to this because we never snap throttled it. Um, looking at field trims, uh, when you had it on vibrator, try um, try and go back to your um, your voltage never changed there, but it it should you know the signal voltage. I don't even know. I think it says it's off. It should have went to rich, right? Yeah. And it actually, it you know, um, um, the best way to do this is to watch it with the scope because it goes rich and lean and rich and lean. Uh, it yeah. doesn't stay steady. I think right now the voltmeter is um, averaging out. That's why it's steady at, at 0.15. Okay. So you want me to put the scope on it? Yeah, try and put the scope on it. And it should be reflecting that in live data too. If you if you look at the O2 sensor um, live data, so you actually could put your positive lead on the signal wire, and then pull up the scan tool live data and watch O2 sensor the readings from that. Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, you can put your scope on the signal wire, and then you can so drag the red lead over there and then watch to see what it, what's happening there. Um, so it should be zero and one. So you have to change your voltage scale. There you go. And you can kind of see it fluctuating. Go go. Uh, Let's try to bring the time, try to change the time scale or even trigger, lower the trigger um, down and it should help you put it on uh, trigger. Oops. There you go. It's not pulling up any, any. Uh... Yeah, nothing. Try and snap throttle it and see if something comes into the picture. Nothing. Um, do you have 12 volts at the O2 sensor? You can just move the red lead. Oh, oh. oops. Oh, what is that? Oh. <laughs> 13. 13, yep. okay, so at least we have source voltage. Um, what did you change? Did you change the O2 sensor? <laughs> I changed like everything. Okay. Yeah. Math, O2 sensor. I think the fuel pump's like the only thing I didn't change. You changed ECU? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you change any of the wires from the O2 sensor to the ECU? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Did you look at what the, what's the fuel pressure supposed to be 200 oh no is that that okay yeah <laughs> did you happen to uh to test the math the math yep uh i tested it and then i replaced it oh shit okay uh <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, you know what? Can you look at live data of the O2 sensor again?
You want the short term? Yeah, leave that. Leave that. Let's just see what. Anything else you want? Why not? Was it? Uh... I mean, because the codes that were coming up was, um, was it low signal or no signal? Um, I think low signal. We wait, while you're here, snap, thro snap throttle the, um, snap that throttle and, and see if there's anything that, there you go. So we got a spike on, oh, that's the purge valve, right? Or is that green? What color is Yellow that? is canister. That's a purge valve. So we're not getting any, uh, hold on, I got to move it. Here, guys, the camera. I don't do this. There we go. Is there an EGR one? Yeah, there should be. Okay, so green is. We're getting spikes here for. Is that green or blue? That's blue, right? Oxygen sensor off with voltage. Okay, that's good. Ooh, so at least oxygen it's... sensor. The flat line right here is oxygen sensor the one where you're or, i mean a long, this is long term fuel trim and then that's o2 Blue. yeah so it did it did spike right yeah it did but it's not on the not on the meter that's canister how come we're not purge. seeing a short term canister purge in egr there can you get rid of the other ones everything except short term i've never seen um the red line there because the short term is going to make corrections for the long term, immediate corrections. So there should be. Whoa. What is that? Oh, it's cutting what? out. It's cutting out. What is that? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, try to snap throttle it. Let's see if something. Oh, wow. Look at that. Huh. Can you snap throttle again? See if it repeats. Those blue lines. Okay, there you go. So there's a problem on the. There's definitely a problem, either with the left tube. Or this. <laughs> oh, there you go. So now you got some weird uh, negatives on the. Uh, weird. On the short term. The short term should be going pulling down and going up, depending if you're throttling it or not, to to make corrections for the immediate corrections. Yeah, that should dip down when you go full throttle. Yeah, and then it should auto auto correct. I don't I don't know if there's a fault here. Well, I'm stumped. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, why don't we, why don't you give me, give me, do you know what number that was in the list? Or go from the, the oh, it's the, the one, bottom. two, three, four, four from the bottom? Yep. Okay, let me. I've got a lot of time on this one. I bet. And, and you know, that <laughs> two hours. <laughs> Simulator, fourth from bottom. I think there's this, I think, I, I made this, I think there's a circuit issue, but I need to go back and double check. Um, All right. It's, it's definitely not supposed to be having those blanks in there for short term uh, field trim directions. However, um, I think I might have just put this in there because we're running out of, of uh, simulators or, or ignitions in it. Really, I want to. I try to cover this stuff more in fuels, but I think this has got most of the problems I picked were electrical issues that I put in ignition. So I'm pretty sure there's a circuit issue here. 
Okay. I just don't an L2 sensor circuit issue? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you check the L2 sensor circuit? Pretty sure. He had like the point. output to the computer and all that. He had 0.15 on volts from signal and it was staying, staying steady at 0.15. This wire right here? Yeah. That was signal and then this number four is your What are you what are we looking for, Chris? Signal on twenty nine. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I just wanted to I just wasn't sure where we were at. Just quickly checking. Yeah, yeah. So the heater circuit's working because it's already showing a voltage. Right. Yeah. Um, well, it's not the heater side, is it? No, I mean it wouldn't show a voltage if it wasn't. Yeah. If the heater wasn't warming it up already. Yes. But you should check on the heater side too. But okay. there is no code for heaters. I, yeah. I, I think the code was low signal voltage at two cents. Yeah, low signal. Let's, you know what, let's just stop here. We're going down a whole yep. <laughs> other pathway that um, I think we should save for fall. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, what, it, isn't it, are all the uh, simulators, aren't they supposed to all have something to do with the ignition side or does no, it not matter? No, I added a bunch more in there oh, okay, okay. to try to give you guys more and more to do because we're not meeting um we're not even i'm not even lecturing the whole time we're supposed to meet because i feel like after two hours it's it's not going to be effective to be teaching this way online i'll be honest i don't think it's going to keep you guys your attention so mm -hmm. i don't even give you guys a break like we've been going since four o'clock um, yeah most of the time let's keep going um so we'll I, I'll, I'll verify what I bugged here, but I think it was a circuit issue, um, Chris. But I'll um, I'll get back to you guys this on uh, to this on Thursday. Okay. All right. Um, I got everybody in the review. Let me um, let me pull up some of the things I wanted to share. So. Can everybody see this? Can you guys see this? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. It's a, um, I, I'm part of a, a diagnostics thing on, uh, on Instagram. So I try, I've been trying to save these because there've been some, there've been some interesting, um, case studies that people have been recording. And, and for some reason, all the ones I recorded this past week from, from last Thursday, uh, from Thursday to now have been from, um, um, the, the use scope. So, uh, this guy's name is Kyle. Uh, he's he's looking at this is the second Toyota Lexus. I just want to read this column here. Um, actually, what's this technician name? I don't remember. I I saved a, a bunch of them, but this is actually watching the oil control valve. I don't think it's an ignition related problem, but it is a signal related problem um, for camshaft position D. So the timing uh, was over retarded on bank one or the firewall side uh, and it was an intermittent problem which didn't set the light but would act up one out of 20 times you try. Um, we also verified that the control side is good. Uh, in the first video it shows like a known good and response from the engine. Um, the second video shows no activity from the oil control valve in bank one. 
um, and it and it passes a resistance test. So, um, like like Scanner Danner said, if it passes a test, it still can be bad. But if it if it fails a resistance test, it, it's it failed the resistance test. But um, I just wanted to show that. I think I saved this because I just wanted to show it. Can you guys hear the sound? Can you guys hear the sound? Uh, I don't know. It's not playing. Right here. I got it. Here you go. Oh, oh, that's it. Yeah. yeah. This first one is showing that it's good, and the second video, I think, is one that shows it's bad. Here's the second video. He's, com he's combining tools here. Um, he's watching the multimeter range uh, or voltage on the multimeter. Then he's using his scope to watch the, um, watching for an intermittent problem to happen. And he's also using the scan tool to watch live data for them. So he's watching the RPM range right now because he can't be inside the car or maybe because the car doesn't have a tack. I don't know. But that, he's, look, he's, using, he's using three different tools here. This is just a picture of uh, the code. Stop sharing this for a second. Hold on. Oh, um, if you weren't, um, if you weren't in class on the day I, I showed everybody, I got the patches in for um, the entry level tests if you guys passed them. Not sharing the screen. Okay, good. Oh, here it is. Okay, let me share this screen. Okay. I had it all set up before class. Um, something like that happened. It all closed. So anyway, here, here's the, uh, this scenario. This is the one I wanted to show. The 2006, can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a 2006 Ford 4.6 3 valve. Uh, use this capacitive uh, pickup to quickly determine which cylinder is misfiring, but also what's wrong. So I want you guys to take a look at this and guys um, think about what could be wrong here. So the first video shows bank two starting at cylinder eight, eight, and then through to cylinder four, then back to cylinder eight. Waveform. Oh, let's let's go to this video.
So he's moving cylinder to cylinder. So that one right here we're looking at is cylinder eight. Um, if you just use the Sesame Street logic, um, do they all look the same? Mm -mm. Okay. Let me move uh, to the second video here. tells me possible spark leakage before cylinder and high resistance in secondary. So it pulled the spark plug and found very small cracks in the porcelain. Um, thought it maybe was an ignition or ignition coil boots, but were damaged too. So they swapped to cylinder four in the second video. Um, so the customer only wanted the one spark plug changed. So you guys can see how using the scope helps you identify um, exactly what the, what the problem was. It actually the voltage shot shot up way out of the screen um, on the <laughs> cylinder that was misfiring um, and you know really that's what I would like what it would ideally would like to have in our class uh, would be these kinds of engine performance problems but unfortunately I, we can't get just ignition related stuff when um, for each class it doesn't work that way in reality so um, by showing you guys videos like this, it should help you guys know when you, if you were to put a, um, what is a capacitive pickup? You know, in this sentence right here, it says it, he uses a, let's see. Where? Oh, right there, yeah. Use my capacitive pickup to quickly determine which cylinder is misfiring. What is a, oh shit, hold on. Hey! Let him clean. Somebody getting putty. putty. And back. What what is a capacitive pickup? Uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's one of those. No, the the flat. Um, it's the pickup that you would put on the spark plug wire. Uh, cup on. It's not a. It's not a cop one. It's the, uh, the, the, the one that clamps around the wire, right? Yeah, it looks like an. It's an inductive pickup. Um, it's got the the silver, um, clamp on. It. It's kind of wider. Yeah, it kind of looks like an alligator clip almost, but it's a little bit wider. It's designed to clip around the. Um, the spark plug wire. Alligator clip. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and it has a ground attached to it, a ground wire. Anyway, but it's um, circular. Yeah, I wish they had a. 
wish there were some pictures here what the plug looked like. But anyway, that's what the scope, um, the scope work he, he used, uh, and how he identified the problem that way. Um, and obviously, if you look, if you go back to the first uh, scope picture or video, you can see it. It looks way different. The voltage uh, goes way higher than the other cylinders he's in, he's uh, he's testing. Actually, um, real quick, what side of the ignition system is he is he testing? Secondary. 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 Good. Good. <clears throat> I mean, um, if you look at it, everything's got a good ground path, except for that second one. Look how everything's returning back down to ground. And then when he goes to the cylinder eight and the thing shoots way off the board, and then it's got this weird ramp. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not even returning the same pathway to ground that it that the other cylinders are so uh, I thought it was I thought that was a good one to share mm -hmm. um, so that was just a bad plug it was a cracked spark uh, porcelain on the plug was cracked so the electricity was shooting out um, to ground be uh, before it got to the combustion chamber so the electricity is going to follow the the path of least resistance. It is, so yeah, it escapes. Yeah, it's just basically arcing out. Um, and because of the way those, those cylinder heads were designed, you can't like spray water down there um, to see if it's arcing out that way. Um, it's... Oh, here. Um, I thought I would share this with you guys, too. I don't know. Randomly, I, I spot things and think about the class. I don't, sometimes I don't remember how I wanted to share it, but it, it was um, this guy is doing uh, some pressure testing with a, a pressure transducer. So he's got a pressure transducer or a pulse sensor testing at the injector regulator. Um, and you can see when he unplugs the, the injector, what happens? So here. So when he unplugs the injector, we're going to lose the injector of the injector signal. You know what, maybe this wasn't a good example. I, I just uh, I recorded a bunch of stuff and I can't remember um, <laughs> which one is which. Here's the other one. Um, okay, here's the other thing I found that I thought would be uh, fun to share. It was on, it was on Reddit, uh, but it was a, it was interesting to show it in this in this uh, type of a format. I'm pretty sure Electude and um, CDX has some some similar animations, but can you guys see this? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> uh, it even lists it out here. So one through 10, the different parts. So we can, we can just eliminate all the spark plugs because we all know what that is. And we can eliminate the spark plug wires. But I think the last class, uh, part of the, 
the conversation we were having was about the rotor and the the cap and the different points on the on those parts. Anyway, um, if we follow through here, we have our coil, and we have it looks like our um, our control module. module. Yep, control module, um, and then our <clears throat> control module is getting triggered by this. So what is this? By the must be the the, the, cam. the cam. Yeah, so it's got the it's got a distributor shaft and timing disc or or a trigger wheel. Um, this would be like our our pick our ignition pickup for triggering the the module, which tells the coil to fire according to the timing of the um, the reluctor there. So that would be like your camera crank sensor. Um, and okay, I just I just okay. like this. It was it was a simplified image for for some of you who still weren't sure how the um, the pickup triggered the computer or the module. Um, the only difference that we've covered, the only difference that we've covered is that some have a like a like a reference voltage that comes back or feedback circuit to tell the module that it fired. In this, we're only seeing it in one direction, but um, we have seen where there is. Uh, a feedback voltage that comes back to the module to tell it to fire again. Um, this one's just being triggered. So every time this wheel passes and induces voltage here to the module, it um, it fires the coil. You guys can follow it. So the first one's points. not lighting up. It, it is. It's right. Right now. Right now. Right now. See, it when it turns white here... Oh, no, the, the this, um, fifth this. spark plug. Huh? The oh, fifth, fifth spark plug. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Bad, um, and, well, bad maybe they're showing a misfire. <laughs> yeah, could be a wire, could be the, the plug. Probably the, the connection since it's sending to every other wire except for that one. Yep, could be. So it's it's okay. So in this scenario, like like Darren pointed out, I didn't even notice that, Darren. Thank you. But in this scenario, um, would we have a coil problem? No. Or would, would we have a module problem? No. Or even a pickup? No, because we're getting spark everywhere else in this distributor, and that's one way that um, you know it makes it a little bit easier to diagnose this way because like like last week we we watched in the video and scanner down said the guy didn't even you know test the i think it was a, a cap issue or something where he had no spark at the cylinder and without even back test back testing correctly he just assumed that he wasn't getting spark at all and um I think it was a rotor issue or something that was just spinning. Yeah, it was. I think it was a rotor issue. Yeah. Um, and so in this in this case, every cylinder is getting sparked except for number five, like like Darren said. So in this case, it's probably a wire or a spark plug. Anyway, um, if you want me to send you guys any of this stuff, I can. But I just thought I'd share it with you as a as a you know it's a good animation for for understanding how the the trigger gives the or makes the coil fire all right okay i have our simulator open if you guys are ready to tack tackle this yeah okay why don't um who can we're not calling it. You know what, Hudson? Yeah, Hudson. Yeah. I was just about to say Hudson. Hudson, can you project this problem onto your um from your computer? Negative. How come? I'm on my phone. Oh, okay. Who's well, on the computer? Go go to your computer. I can't. Why? My brother's using it. What? Okay. Yep. Uh, why don't we try this, Darren? Are you on? You're on a computer, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, can you can you project this problem? Oops. Uh, it is 19 from the bottom. 
It is Nine customer from the bottom. Yeah, customer says checked engine light comes on and the engine engine hesitates on acceleration. Okay, hold on. I just got logged out of my electric. Okay. This one? Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah? the one. All right. You didn't solve this one, did you? No, I never. Okay, good, good. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Good. So he's gonna do the play by play. He's gonna do the uh, verify the problem, right, Darren? Darren. Darren. <laughs> Darren. Hello? Darren. Yeah. You got um, it at the top of the screen there is a box that's uh, um says view options. And it's gonna have a or I don't I can't see how you you have to um to share sound. So if you go to the top, there's gonna be like uh four or five boxes that pop up and it's gonna say share sound. Are you there? Darren? I don't see a share sound option. You know what? You know what? Here, I'll, I'll do it, and you guys just tell me what to do, okay? okay. Uh, why don't you stop sharing, and then I'll share my screen. It might help. Then I, then I can share the sound. Yeah, I had a lot of options, but I didn't see that one. It's right here. Can you guys see this up on the top of my screen? There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, no, only you can see that. No. <laughs> oh, okay. At the top where it says you're sharing, there's a part that says share computer sound on the far right under more. Anyway, here's the, it'll work this way either way. Okay, there we go. So you, why don't why don't you lead us off, Darren? What should I do? Start the car and um verify the problem by gassing gassing the throttle. Okay. You guys hear that? Mm. Yeah. It says the problem is uh, check engine light comes on and engine hesitates on acceleration. So we accelerate the engine. Do we, we do this problem? No. Okay. Oh, but I think there's something similar like long Yeah, we had a similar like look, I, I accelerate this much and it's fairly yeah. So what should we do next? 
turn off the car. This one's a tricky. Into, this one's yeah. a tricky one because we cannot use the scan tool, so we cannot read codes. Uh, oh, the OBD two. I didn't see that. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Could do a power balance test. We could. We could. But would a power balance test make the engine hesitate on acceleration? Or would a well, well, okay, that's a misfire? Try. Yeah, would a would a misfire cause that to happen? Uh, if the engine is it. idling okay, then I'm not sure. Yeah, it, I guess it could. So, so let's try. So we got our engine running. Well, hey, look. Evan, we don't have a scan tool. We don't have a scan tool to do the uh, power balance test. Well, can't you Ooh, unplug it's a injectors? diagnostic tester. Okay, good. Good, good. Do you guys all understand what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start the engine. And then... Uh, Should we wait until it's um, warmed up? It gave us a scan tool in our tools, but I know it says not to use it. Where? Oh, what the? Diagnostic, oh, diagnostic tester. tester. Yeah. Wait, what if you click on it? Just. But that the, inst the instructions are do not use the scan tool. But it does it like make it so you can't or? <gasps> now we lost all the points. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, take it as a um, kind of a reality thing because what if you're working one day and your scan tool breaks? Like, say, uh, say it's yeah, a staff try not use it. or auto or something, right? I mean, no, you should always use it because it is going to give you the quickest um, tips as to what's going on, or at least what the computer sees. I'm just saying, like, what if something happens and, it, and your scan tool does break, then you won't. Are you, is, is the shop going to shut down because the scan tool broke? Probably not. Um, and it would make you look a little bit more legitimate and, and more valuable to your boss to say, like, hey, boss, like, I'm going to try to diagnose this without the scan tool because the scan tool is broken, but I don't want to stop making you money, so let's take it on as a challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Anyways, it's a, it's a little warmed up. Uh, in mm -hmm. the shop, you have like the uh, use like the commands and the identifics. But with this, how do we find like specs in case we are need look at like electric something? If we can't use the uh, sample for that. Oh, in this scenario, um, well, that's the point of this exercise. That's why I put it in this list is because I wanted to challenge you guys to to see what route you would take. Maybe it um, lets you go into data in the scan tool. That's why it's there and not like in the codes. I don't know. I didn't. I never. I haven't run this uh, particular uh, simulator yet. I, I wanted. Okay. I know what the problem is. I just didn't want. I wanted to see how you would, you guys would solve it. So okay. at this point, if you wanted to do a power balance test. We can unplug each injector and see if we get the same RPM drop, right? Mm -hmm. change on that one.
Okay. <laughs> oh. hey. Now what do you guys want to do? Check power and ground using Sesame Street logic. Yeah. Do you want to use a scope for this or you want to use a uh, voltmeter? Uh, we can... We can use this this scope for both, anyways. Right. I hate doing this for you guys. I'd rather you guys do this, but yeah. <laughs> I'll watch you. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Check the fourth one. At least we're getting power. Oh, this is our, our good cylinder, right? Yeah. Got power. Got power. Right, so. Just that we got good power now. Check, um... The uh, coil too. You want to check resistance? Or the power to the coil too. Power to the coil? So the ignition coil? Yeah. Got it. So the coil is Hold on, here. Evan. Hold on, I think you're onto something, but I I need everybody to participate. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> now what do we do? <laughs> Anybody? So there's no power to the coil? Doesn't look like it. I, I tested uh, coil number three, and I got 13 12-ish volts. Test coil number four. At least we identified what cylinder the problem was with the power balance test. So that was a good, a good call, Evan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who else is uh, Nate still here? Nate, what should we do next? Can uh, check the wires. Check the wires. Okay. Uh -oh. Anybody else find this strange? Yeah. There's no signal to the injector. Well, there mm -hmm. is, but it's really weird. Okay. So the reason I, I went down this pathway to show you guys uh, an, another another step. So when you were when you had you were scoping from here to here before you skip out. Um, and end up having to return because of another condition. Um, by understanding both of these, since they're right next to each other, in this scenario, it's real easy to just drag the lead across. Um, yeah. We have no, we have no power to the coil. We have no what? Have to inject it. No signal. Or 
Not, not signal. Or what would that be called? No ground Pulse. control. No ground, ground control. Who was that? No ground control. Chris. That's yes. Chris. Good job, Chris. There's no ground control over this. So by putting those two pictures together, could that lead you to like a, some kind of diagnostic strategy next? It should, right? Because if we just yeah. said, if we just said we had um, no power here, I would say, okay, well, let's go look at the fuse. Uh, but in this scenario, we have no power as well as no ground control. So what supplies the ground control to the injector? ECU. 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 Okay, good. So now we know that it's not like a, a relay or, um, you know, we, it's not like the ignition switch is causing this problem. Mm -hmm. This particular problem is coming from the ECU. So if we had to go down this route anyways, where we had to test the ECU um, and say we had to change the ECU, which I, I'm not suggesting it, nor am I telling you you should do that for this scenario. Um, shouldn't we concentrate on the, the bigger problem first? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, now that we know we have no injector pulse, so we have very low injector pulse. Actually, this coil, what does this tell us? Like, I'm, I'm moving the lead from, from positive to ground. I mean, we kind of said it already. We have no inject, or we have no ground control. So, is this current? What is this current? It's just doing? flowing through. It's just flowing through. Yeah, it's not being used up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's just—it's just another way of saying we have no ground control. This yeah, thing. no supplied ground. So what? What should we do next? Pull up the wiring diagram. Pull up the wiring diagram and pull out the breakout box because I think we're going to the ECU with this thing. Is that fair to say? To, to yeah, yeah. In that direction? Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah, there we go. Try to stay out of the scan tool. So we have our number four. Um, Injector doesn't have any ground control on the blue wire here, so at 14. Should we test at pin 14? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and what is that doing, guys? Testing the. What is testing 14? We're testing? using all the power. N no. Testing the ground at 14. We're testing the control from the computer to the injector at 14. So if we have injector control here, what could we, what at what which strategy should we take then? What should the we wire. Do yeah, we can we can go straight after the wire. However, if we don't have ground control here, um, if I was testing this, I would test the the next cylinder over see if that had ground control just to verify it here. And if it had ground control, then we could almost assume that it's the computer, right? That's a problem. Yeah, yeah. If we, because only because. Um, there's nothing else it could be. Yeah, there's nothing else it could be because we're testing right at the pin out for ground control. Or, yeah, for control of the injector. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's turn this back on. Yes, whatever was going on. 14. Okay, so if we move over to 13, we know that cylinder had a drop, so we had power there. If we look at 13, oh, I don't have that channel on. Oops, my bad. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's the red lead. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> um, We're not pulling down to ground at all, so we have no ground control. We put a 13. We're pulling down. Try to isolate this too long. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah. We can lower, raise our lower trigger. That parade, or we can raise it up, freeze it in place. Mm -hmm. Observe it. 
but um, I mean that's we pretty much got our answer right. Would you guys agree? Right. If we yeah. go back to fourteen, we got yeah. no, we have no control here. So what should we do? Replace the ECU. Okay, Replace the ECU. All, would you guys all agree? Eight. Yeah. Okay. We'll shut this down. Close everything up. Yeah. And we'll see if when we change the ECU, if it brings back uh, power to our coil as well. If it doesn't, then we have another problem, right? More, more diagnostic. More diagnostic, which it, um, we could have more diagnostics. Right. The computer down here. Just replace this. Put it back in. Plug this in. I don't know how we're gonna um, set our throttle without without using the the scan. Uh, reprogramming. Uh. So. Maybe see. maybe it lets you just do that. Maybe we'll see. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, it won't let you read codes. That's what I figured. Yeah. Uh, oh, it makes you do uh, it every time. <coughs> I want you to let you program oh, it, I, I guess. Program it. Huh? Wait, it won't oh, let us reprogram? Yeah. Uh, uh. What if you click on ECU in there? Oh, so we're not supposed to use it at all, that's why. Try to go. What if you go back into, um, go back and go into <clears throat> control units? Click on ECU. Make sure it says uh no, oh, no we programming. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we did, I think elected did. <laughs> hey, you know what I, I saw I, an email came through um elected, I think two hundred and sixteen more schools signed up for it like yesterday. So it's very possible that their servers are going to crash now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's messed up. I don't. I don't know what to do. Uh, I got everything plugged in, right? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, what if you? What if it's the job's just done? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we could try that. I mean, there's nothing else. Right. I'm, I don't know. I like I said, I've never run it. I I signed it and maybe look at the work the order. Uh, with all these and repairs and needed without these discounts. Okay, so let's let's type out the work order. See what happens. I mean, yeah. Um, verify. What do we do next? Uh, power balance. Power, yeah, power balance. Yeah, performed. Balance. Test and found what? Cylinder four. Not contributing. Then what? Then we um, check for power at the injectors and coil. Four, number four. Yeah, yeah. Injector. Four injecting coil. 
and coil. No, no power to coil. No injector pulse, right? Uh, no ground control. Yeah, no. Because they're both not. It's we had no power at the coil, but we didn't have ground control at the, the injector. So I guess we should clarify that. Test for power at number four coil. Uh, we had no. Why don't we say we had no? No power. No power at number four coil. Mm -hmm. No ground control at number four injector. <clears throat> okay. Then we checked for ground control at ECU. And I, well, actually, uh, found no ground control at ECU, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Change the computer. Yeah. Change ECU. And then. Can we use the breakout box to check signal from the computers? Yeah, that's what oh, we. Oh, okay, I can add that in. Yeah. Uh, found no ground control. Pair two, pin thirteen. I think it's laid on my side. Compared to pin thirteen. Yeah. With yeah. The breakout box. And now we're waiting for a new scan tool to come in so we can program the car. <laughs> All right. okay, let's, let's see what happens. I'm I'm a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> no harm, no fall. At least you guys, uh, I watched you guys diagnose it from beginning to the end without a scan tool. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so turn customer. Failure is not resolved. Try ah. Resolve. <laughs> Bummer. Okay. Should we try to tackle it again? Maybe pick a different strategy? Um, we can test. We can see what's going on with the coil. Does that mean that you have a programmed ECU now? <laughs> I think I got to back out. We got to start it Just over. restart it. Yeah. Damn. I'll tell you what. Um, we started at four, it's almost six. Why don't we just try to solve this and then I'll let you guys go for the night and I'll start back up on Thursday with the video that I intended to show you guys tonight along with the CAN bus stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's just try to solve this one problem. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Um, we could um, try, try and look at the coil side of things and okay. so the injector side. Oh, crap. oh it's... I Where think it you? saved your progress. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> I closed it. Save progress, I think. It says busy. It says start module, though. Yeah, I know. I thought it was just. It always says start module. Oh. <laughs> the work order side, does it have something like reset when you're within it? Like if you go inside to pull off the work order below submit, does that have like a reset button or something like that? Is there? Maybe if you fail it. I have no, no idea. <laughs> Wait, try and start it again? Oh, your, um... it, it kept our work orders, though. Yeah, it kept the work order. What about the help button? Wait, if you scroll down below, like the very bottom, 
<laughs> can't understand you. Where are you like a with all the tools? In the oh, part with all the tools, button. there's the uh, help button. See if that is an option for restarting. Where's the help button? If you open the sidebar, Lawrence. Sidebar. Help button. Uh, I don't think so. Could uh have someone else cast their screen? Yeah, I, I still want to know how we can. If I erase this, what will happen? Oh, this is second strike. Oh, Let's try it again. Maybe we get third strike and you're out. <laughs> <laughs> no. So keep going. How many keep strikes going. can you get? <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> hey. now it's locked out. You're locked out now from the job. <laughs> now I'll try exit in and go back in. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, 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 no. We did it. No, it's zero percent correct. <laughs> Damn. Okay, wait. Does this let me retry it now? All right. Look at that. I think it. No. <laughs> no. You're a lot harder. Right? Okay. What about in the scan tool? Is there? Can we? Do the ECU thing now. Uh, no. 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 Boo. I have to go in internally and reset this. Um. Well, you know, that's the first time in all the years I've been using this thing it, it ever did something like that. So maybe whoever said, uh, you know, the servers are, maybe it is, maybe it is, um, anyway, uh, maybe what I should do is, I only try to keep you guys on it for two hours. So you've been on since four. Um, I try to, I wanted to, to watch this video, um, uh, tonight with you guys. It's, it's under, uh, Scanner Danner's account. It is. No cram, no cam, and no crank. Here, here. No, no power to cam and crank sensors. Um, so maybe what? Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Yeah, it's it's an hour and 35 minutes long. Maybe what you guys can do is watch this for Thursday's class. Um, it actually breaks it down into the whole video through his different his different tests. And maybe we can go over this on, on Thursday um, as a review. And then I can just cover material for CAN bus. Um, does that sound fair? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. He's basically going through um, all the different methods he used to diagnose that there's there's no power and no, no power to camp or crank sensors okay um i won't keep you guys on any longer than you got to be here so um thank you for showing up tonight and then uh um i'll answer your question hudson about the the toyota the lexus 3.0 and then i got um a question about waste park as well as can bus i'll try to i'll try to answer that all on thursday which um which electude problem was that one? That was nineteen from the bottom. I counted it um nineteen from the bottom. And I'll I'll try to reset let me write this down. Reset nineteen from bottom. And then um try to Should we try and do it and see if we can 
Yeah, please do. Get a different uh, all, result. All of them are assigned to you guys. I just try to pick the ones that we haven't answered as a class. Yeah. Um, I try to pick odd ones throughout the list to, to try to do as a class assignment. But, um, yeah, try to do it and see if you get a different result than I do. I'm, I don't know how... I don't know how that happened because we tested for ground at a, or that ground control at the computer, and I would think if the computer wasn't putting that signal out, the computer was bad. But um, yeah, especially if it's putting it out to every other. One. Right. You guys saw we just moved over one, and it had signal there. We had no signal at number fourteen. Anyway, why don't you guys try that too before Thursday and let me know how it goes on Thursday night. Okay. Okay, I'll see you guys on Thursday at 4 o'clock. All right. All right. Sounds Thank good. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. Yeah, you, you too. too. All right. Have a good night. Bye.